Candidamente, podcast attorno al project management, realizzato dal branch Lombardia del Project Management Institute, Northern Italy Chapter. Dear all, welcome to this podcast and welcome back for those that are already following us on the podcast issued by the branch Lombardy of the PMI Northern Italy Chapter. My name is Matteo Fioramanti and I am a volunteer of the branch Lombardy. This podcast is dedicated to project management in healthcare. Today we are meeting Dr. Deepa Bide. She's from India and she's a physician and currently working in the healthcare domain. She's a project manager and very active to adopt project management in healthcare and related domains. We are pleased to meet her and I kindly ask her to provide us with a brief introduction of herself and her experience. Thank you. Thank you so much. My name is uh, Deepa Bide and I'm based out of Hyderabad, India. I've been in healthcare for the last uh, two and a half decades now. Uh, I have completed my MBBS degree in medicine. I'm a physician and then my postgraduate degree in pediatrics and neonatology. After a practicing independently uh, in clinical practice, I chose to move to areas of uh, information technology, content development, and allied branches that were very close to the clinical practice itself. And I really like this uh, part of the work because this was having a main influence on the clinical uh, fraternity and the way they operate. Uh, in while doing so, I came across a lot of projects, which uh, a lot of activities that made me think that there has to be a structure to do these projects. There has to be a disciplined way that these activities are conducted. And hence, when I looked out, uh, I was directed to the PMI. And at that point, I got myself certified, uh, PMP certified in uh, about 2007. And since then, I'm active uh, volunteer for PMI. Uh, I have been on the Academy of PMI City chapter, which is Hyderabad chapter. And after that, actively uh, working for global PMI in many roles. The first role was uh, as a knowledge volunteer for healthcare community of practice. And then the ethics review committee, then the ethics system modernization task team, which was a global team constituted by for about 10 um, global volunteers. And now I'm a co-chair for the Ethics Insight team. Uh, these roles uh, have spanned over the last 10 years and I thoroughly enjoy myself working in project management, but more than that, actually applying project management in my day-to-day -day work. Uh, currently, I uh, work in the role of uh, with an institute and I'm heading training Uh, process improvement and quality. And I am also a part of uh, the IT segment whenever as in a consultant mode. So I'm very happy to do what I am doing uh, and really looking forward to contribution that I have with this blend of project management and a physician in the healthcare domain. Thanks, Deepa. Could you please share with us some of the key concepts? What is meant with patient care? Why is it important? And what are the delivery principles in the healthcare sector? Sure. Uh, I think that's a very good question to start with. And uh, I would say that the patient care in itself uh, from times immemorial has really evolved into what we see today, which is really at the end of the value chain uh, in terms of its sophistication. However, I know looking at the way things are moving at such a fast pace that we are likely to see much more changes and we'll come to some of them uh, later on. The key pillars, I think, I think in my opinion, the key pillars on which the entire principles of healthcare really are about the whole idea of collaboration, a trust, a trust between the physician and the patient, a trust that the patient has on the experience and the expertise of the physician, thinking that he is a person who is going to cure me. This is such an integral bond and being a physician, living that bond day in and day out makes us feel 
very responsible for the patient care. I think this is the key bond and I really want to emphasize that. Now, if you just take a other things which are related to this bond and this trust is about accessibility. So the patient who has an access to the physician uh, about the participation, the ancillary team, for example, the nurses, the paramedical staff, the pharmacist, the IT sector, and the sector who is the entire insurance sector, the pharmacy sector. The third thing is the technology. Now, without technology, I don't think we would have reached this level of sophistication and this level of the care delivery itself. And last but not the least, like I said, it's the whole collaboration. Today, the patient could be at any part of the world, but he can travel, he can visit multiple hospitals and the entire track record of his diseases is known to the physicians who are taking care of him. And this is possible because of a large amount of collaboration, coordination, which goes into the sector, uh, is, goes into creation of these platforms itself. Now, I would like to specify two or three things which according to me are very, very important care delivery principles. The first thing is look at the patient in the entirety. So just not looking at the patient that, you know, this is his problem or that is the area from where he comes. Just thinking about the patient holistically. I think that is the first and the foremost care delivery principle. The second care delivery principle is about, and I've talked about this just earlier, two minutes earlier, is about this collaborative leadership. So there is a clinical leadership where the physicians are taking responsibility of the domain knowledge that they have and this whole collaboration that goes into making clinical leadership and executing on the clinical, clinical leadership for treating the patient. The third is really about the information technology. Now information technology, which ranges from primary center where the patient visits from a rural hospital to a tertiary or the most sophisticated hospitals in any part of the world. Information technology is all over the place. It, it, a person, a patient could have a smartphone and that could transform his healthcare because he can quickly go to the call the ambulance and he can quickly go to the hospital. The next one which I would like to think is it's not just about the physical ailment of the patient. I think what we also have to think is integration of his financial, social, physical, intellectual, and behavioral health into his whole consortium. Because just treating a patient for that particular disease is not treating him comprehensively, which is what I said. And last but not the least, I would like to say, having organizations who really cater to the needs of this delivery requirement. So not organizations which are very, very short-sighted, but organization which are looking into futuristic, organizations which are very nimble, organizations who think about patient as a complete process and then starting from uh, right from his symptoms to the place where he could be treated and he's discharged. I think having that sort of team members with the organization, building such an organization is very important. So I hope I've been able to put across, these are the very important care delivery principles. Very good, thank you. Which are the main models of a patient care? Do they apply worldwide? I think uh, the main models of patient patient care, like I said, are uh, the patient care who is more from a community centric patient care, I would say. Now community centric patient care is patient who is really absorbed into the community of care. He is not treated like just one individual, but he is a patient who belongs to the community. He is person who belongs to that community or that cohort of the type of illnesses that need to be taken care of. That would be one model. So I would look at that as a one model. 
The second model of patient care is really about the patient lying in a, a complete silo of his, for his own care. And that we call as a clinical care for, for example, right from the initiation of his symptoms to the end of his symptoms. This particular continuum of care, which we call is the clinical model. The third model, which which, like I said earlier, is about public health. Now, public health model in a way is similar to community of community care model, but public health model looks at the patient in a larger perspective. So if you have one case and today, as we have seen one or five cases of cluster pneumonia, which was supposed to be in around January of last year, that is 2020. This caused a public health scare and this then went on to under understanding what is the diagnosis, what is the type of this disease and a public health concern today, which and all of us who have been gripped by the pandemic. And the last model of care, which I would say is the a care that is a managed care. So in a way, the managed care, not as a, as a sense of uh, looking at a patient who has to be managed in this way, but from an evidence based medicine standpoint. So there are very, very strict guidelines about a particular disease and these guidelines are then written into protocols. These protocols are called evidence based medicine protocols. And most of the times if these protocols are followed, then the patient's diagnosis and treatment are uh, rendered well. I would say that this evidence based medical diagnosis making this is again very important part of the delivery frameworks. So I would say these are the four models of patient care and they themselves take care of a lot of stakeholders around. They take care of the nursing stakeholders. They take care of uh, the insurance company stakeholders. They take care of the pharmacists who are supplying medications and uh, devices. These are the the fourth is the entire caregiver family. The fifth is the medical devices family. I think these are the models of uh, care that that encompass a lot of requirements that the patient would require in his disease cycle. And they do apply worldwide. Thank you, Eva. When we talk about patient care, sometimes we try to think of it uh, as a continuous services sort of operations. How does project management apply and when? Oh, that's a very good question. Very a, a question that is very close to my heart. So I look at this patient care actually into two compartments. So the way this is my visualization. Now, let me tell you a small story which I've written in my paper and I've said that there's a and this story actually is just a story. So it shouldn't be resembling any person, but about a 42 year old male patient who could have come with symptoms of let's say suggestive of diabetes and his wife she understands that he's clearly not well and she takes him to the physician and the physician examines him and he does a few tests and he finds out yes it could be diabetes and then there are confirmatory tests done for that and after that the patient uh, the patient's caregivers know that and the patient themselves know that yes he's been diagnosed with diabetes mellitus and then he's put across many modalities of care which could be counseling which could be uh, pharmaceutical care which could be la medications and couple of surgeries and hospitalization specialist visits and so on now after this whole episodes i would say which go on let's say for six months and i'm just creating a timeline the patient's diabetes is under control so diabetes is never cured, but it comes under control and he's feeling much better. And then his uh, wife gets him back to the physician and says that I think he's feeling much better. The physicians, well, I'm so happy about it. Uh, let's just continue these medications for the next six months. And I would like to review your husband after six months. Now, if I tell you this particular story, and if you are also able to visualize along with me, then I would say that the patient, the project of patient care starts when the patient is brought to the hospital or even earlier when the, di 
when the symptoms are suggestive that the patient is not well. And then this project moved forward through the physicians, through all of those care delivery modalities. And then when the doctor said, well, he's feeling better now, maybe that is the end of the phase or a project. And then the operation start. What is operations in this case? The daily maintenance. So he has to get up, he has to check his blood sugar, he has to take his medications, he has to do his diet control uh, and then move on. And then what happens while doing these operations? Maybe there is a reason why he has a abscess or he has an injury and that triggers again that no, he has to go back and see the doctor because there is an injury and a case of diabetes does not tolerate injuries very well. Now this starts another project, a very small project, again a new project where they have to take care of his injury along with his diabetes. So if you see along with me, I look at these continuous services. I look at it as a project. The project has gone into a mode of operations and the operations themselves are giving rise to smaller projects for the patient till the time the patient is alive. So I, I feel the project management framework is very, very vital to even understand this. So as we say, and at that point of time, I was searching and said, how do I put all of this in a picture? I mean, there are so many diseases and so many diseases go into, you know, starting with one symptom and go into a surgery and then go into multiple things. I felt that this is how the projects work, right? So a project is started for a reason, for a business justification, it has a charter and then the, char the project is expected to give out an outcome which is agreed upon and that's the reason the project has started. And then once the outcome is reached, the project goes into operations and those operations may result in smaller projects for that original one. I just look at it like that and I feel that this is very important that the project pa patient care be looked at as a project of the patient himself. And this patient who has diabetes, there would be, there are innumerable patients with innumerable diagnosis. So my answer would be that yes, patient care is a project. Then the patient care project has gone into operations and may result in future projects more and more. And the project management principles apply throughout the life cycle of the patient's care. Thank you. Reading your contribution, your quotes, you are promoting a transformation call in the healthcare sector. And which are the factors to consider? Does it apply to India or also elsewhere? How are communities approaching these changes? Uh, thank you. I think this is, uh, this is something that is now coming and evolving in many ways. So let's start with uh, the same patient, I would say, because maybe that just allows us to think through that patient and allows us to take our story forward. I'm calling for a transformation call in the healthcare sector on a, a couple of things. So first transformation call or first call of looking at the patient himself in a different way. I am saying that look at the patient as a project, look at him, apply the project management principles of process groups, initiate the patient care, plan for it appropriately, execute on it, maybe all the details, all the activities that you need to execute. Monitor, this is the most important step. And even as we talk, when we thought of this patient who is from who is a diabetic, it's so important to monitor how his symptoms are, what is his blood sugar. So we continuously monitor and track the patient. And at the end, we say that, well, look, you are feeling better now. Your blood sugars are normal now. So we are closing this phase. But it doesn't mean that your blood diabetes has gone anywhere. No you still need to monitor and you now need to take these medications and continue with your diet or exercise. Now, this transformation of not treating just a patient who has just come to the doctor and just giving him a medication to treat only that particular symptom. I'm saying, look at the patient as a project. The patient 
needs to be looked into uh, as a project with all the attributes as a project and that's where i look at uh, the project management then the second way of transformation that i'm talking about or i'm trying to call it, just to make this project a success and just to make this project understood by everybody it is very important that people are educated about project management now if i go to the hospital and i do explain all of these like look patient has to start there has to be a proper initiation a proper planning prop they are going to say well dr bide it all seems fine and uh, i really appreciate that you have thought through all these but can you tell us what this whole framework is because we don't know what you are talking so i am giving a call and i think there has to be some way of transfer making the entire healthcare community i would say clinical non clinical people understand the fundamentals of project management and that today i'm sure is not there because in the in the most cases i would say the clinical teaching is only on the treating the patient and which is absolutely fine what we are trying to understand is and what we really want is how can you also see what are the fundamentals of care delivery which is not necessarily care diagnosis it is the care delivery and that is when you need to think about the transformation now the third point of promoting a transformation which in my opinion is about this entire financial or insurance part now look at it now if a particular disease is taken in this case diabetes is taken care by one doctor and the patient feels better then probably the reimbursement of this happens with for that patient care to this doctor but now in this new model which is and and this model is already taking up is where there is a bundled care that means that the patient has the has to undergo care not only for the initial reason for which the patient has been coming to the doctor but also trying to prevent all those complications which should have happened so it it is a more of a promotive care and it's more of a preventive care than a care of treating complications so for example if this patient the moment he is diagnosed as diabetes and if everybody who is involved in the care tells him hey you need to be very careful with careful with your foot hey you need to be very careful with your eyes he is going to have a better managed care and he may not go into complications this i call as a care that takes care of, of the risks of the patient or the patient's disease and i call this as a transformation where you are looking at multiple a team of doctors and a team of healthcare services who are looking at a patient as a whole so they say okay i just got diabetes i just don't need to get his sugars under control i need to look at him into entirety and that's the transformation call that i feel now the fourth and the final reason in my opinion for promoting this transformation is still the use of information technology now today we still have pockets of where physicians or the clinical staff or the paraclinical staff or the patients themselves they do not use information technology that the way it should be and maybe they are not familiar with it maybe the technology is very intimidating or maybe the network is not good or uh, there's so many reasons <clears throat> what i feel is that the technology now it's such an integral part of our life and with the pandemic now you see the technology has transformed and taken the clinical care at entirely different level and if i'm talking about telemedicine you don't even need to see a physician your physician is actually looking at you from a distance through 
the use by the use of the technology and he's diagnosing your problem and treating you so i make i'm making a call that let us all understand the use on very very smart use of technology to ensure that the care that is expected to be delivered is delivered on time and an example of this i just gave you like telemedicine or home health care now the doctor can still sit in his hospital and monitor all his patients who are sitting in their home or in a very different setting well that cannot happen if there is no technology you still have to have the right monitors right ways right devices which are monitoring the patients this is what it does apply to india it applies globally it's very very important and communities are actually understanding this last 10 years with the booming of information technology in healthcare and lot of changes which are related to the coding system now these codes are actually the codes which i mean i'm talking about international classification of diseases procedural codes the nomenclatures the drug codes and these codes codes actually help moving this information and also allowing a payment so the communities now look at this that hey this is something that which i would like to do because something that is very easily done and it's also giving the right outcome to the prayers that is the insurance companies to the providers who are the physicians the clinical staff and also to the par para clinical staff as well as the pharmacists so the communities like i said the communities are looking at it as very positively and trying to see how they can bring about this transformation as quickly as they can clear deepa thank you very much our podcasts are distributed to the community of pmp you are certified and you are working with pmi in your chapter so different countries and different cultures but always focused on project management and so the question for you is uh, from which standard framework do you get the best to approach your challenges as a project manager thank you thank you for this question matteo i think when i i just feel so so close to the project management community and uh, so my first answer would be that when i first of all let me define it this way um challenges as a project manager what are really my challenges as a project manager so now when i look at my physi- as myself as a physician and a project manager and person who's working in it or has worked in it i my challenge is really about how am i going to treat the patient and make him feel better what that is my most important challenge and what are those things that are going to stop me or be impediments that don't allow me to treat my patient better so for that for example the first point first impediment or the first challenge would be accessibility am i going to get accessibility to my patients care or will the patient get access to my care if will the patient be able to afford medications will i be able to prevent some risk will i be able to give him the type of continuum of care what if my patient tomorrow is in italy and day after tomorrow he moves to belgium and then he comes to the us and india and how how do i track his care i mean he is at the end of the day he is looking to be healthy when he comes to so when i look at my challenges as a project manager there are so many things another thing as a challenge challenge as to me as a project manager would be my team so i'm not the only one who is treating my patients i have a, a, a endocrinologist who is a doctor treating diabetes i have another uh, counselor who is uh, managing the counseling of the patient i have somebody who is taking care of the finances of the patient an it leader who is managing this whole applications this is my team i have to manage my team and each one of us need to think about what's the entire outcome of the of this project that the patient at the end of the day needs to feel better so if i am looking at this multiple ways i have two or three major frameworks that i approach or i use to first understand my challenges so if you can't understand your challenges you can't treat your challenges or you won't be able to overcome your challenges so the first framework is my clinical framework right 
my clinical framework in India is given by the Medical Council of India and the Medical Council of India regulated by many uh, entire Indian uh, setup of medical education. This is my clinical framework. This is also the evidence based medicine framework and I get clinical knowledge clinical domain knowledge which helps me understand like i said two ways one understand prognosticate the challenges to overcome the challenges well that is my first framework my second framework is when i think of this patient as a project then my second framework is the project management framework today project management framework is domain agnostic it does not say that project management framework is only applicable to manufacturing or it of finance no it takes care of every and any domain that comes so that is my framework i go to i actually open the framework and i say hey you know what i have this situation where my team is actually not able to see the outcome that we want to deliver what can i do with it what are my tools what are my techniques that my team has to see the same objective that we are thinking of and in this case like i said my patient needs to feel better or my patient is moving from italy to belgium and then what do we do how do we track his care and how do we solve his impediments that's my second framework and the third framework is about a community health framework like i said earlier in a couple of earlier questions patient is not in silo patient is a part of the community patient is a part of the community where he lives so he is a part of the community where he is in when he is in Italy when he goes to belgium he's going to be a part of the community when he's going to be in belgium and us and so on now look at it as a framework right so one patient let's say he has a communicable disease and the way the pandemic started if he is moving from place to place and this is causing a public health concern the disease is very contagious and being transmitted to the community i am being regulated by the community or the public health framework I have sh I should not be looking at the patient that he's my patient. I'm going to take care of you. Wow, I can. No, I have to be a part of the community. That framework also comes on me. These are my three key frameworks that I look forward to. Let me repeat them. The first is my clinical framework. Like I said, this is a complete map of medicine which helps me understand what the disease is the second like i said i have to think about the delivery i have to think about the team i have to think about his finances the risk what is the scope of his work what are the different procurements that is when my favorite project management comes in picture and last i said patient is or i am not sitting in silo I have to think of myself and my patient who is a part of this universe and I'm bound by the public health framework or the community framework. So these three frameworks, believe me, 80 to 90 percent of the times when I use this, they give me all the information and help me meet my challenges. Few smaller frameworks, I would say, are would be for some, for example, a uh, NABH which is National Accreditation Board of Hospitals now this particular framework actually works with the hospitals and the hospitals then are the best equipped remember I told you about care delivery organization should be, who should be equipped to take care so this framework is on the uh, hospitals which are then equipped to take care of the patient so this framework is not on me if this framework is applied on the care delivery center so you have joined commission international you have a lot of codes and uh, coding frameworks so these are all those uh, frameworks that would help get my and platform ready they, they help get all my care delivery organization ready but to me as a physician like i said three are key frameworks very good we are approaching the end of the podcast one last question in this difficult pandemic period how do you see and would you like to see the role of the project manager uh this is really a very difficult time and uh, i think we all are gripped in this pandemic for the last year and and now we've been with the vaccine coming we don't see the end of the 
uh, pandemic so quickly. So first of all, I would like to recognize, acknowledge everybody who has been a part, playing a key role in pandemic. So first and foremost, I also would like to acknowledge the role that Lombardi has played in, in this pandemic when it was one of the first centers uh, to be afflicted by this COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you to all who have created this body of knowledge, body of this resources, which has then helped the whole world. Uh, I really acknowledge that. Uh, the role of project manager in the pandemic is really going to be about playing a global role. It's very important that because the pandemic is pandemic, it is not a small disease that is like 10 patients who have come to your hospital. First of all, that this pandemic is not something that is, is a finite limit. You, you don't even know. There's a lot of uncertainty. Project managers who are now who now need to get used to uncertainty so like we said we live in the VUCA world right so it's very uncertain and i do feel the pandemic has caused the whole healthcare community or whole healthcare world to be a VUCA world very uncertain uh, lots of volatility and you just so first and the foremost uh, role of the project manager is to understand that he's working in uncertainty the second role which in i see project managers playing is about this teamwork because now everything is virtual i mean you can't you just have to work that way because it's a pandemic that is going to cause more morbidity and deaths if people come together so how does how does the project manager still get his work done when he cannot be in the team in person and face to face why this all these years when we have been used to this it is very difficult. The third thing is change management. This whole pandemic has caused disruption of the way the healthcare is processed. So just from a person, and like I said, the trust that I would like to see my doctor and I would like my doctor to feel and uh, you know take, uh, take my blood pressure and just check my eyes and diagnose me. Right now, nothing is happening. It's all virtually done. So the third, this is a big change, not only for the doctors, for the patients, for the caregivers and everybody around. So the project manager has to deal with the change management. The fourth very important point is the project manager has to be responsible and has to deal with a lot of psychological changes. Because of this entire disruption of the pandemic, it is not easy to convince a patient. It is not easy to uh, get the outcome just as a face-to-face -face care would have been. So this is this, this big psychological cloud that is created where there may be a lack of trust, there may be a lack of accountability. I think the project manager is very, very uh, responsible or may have to be cognizant about how does he get at the end of the day ultimate work done and delivery uh, in this pandemic period now the fifth part i would say to the project manager himself is how does he apply his learnings and say that how am i going to be preventing the next wave of pandemic or next wave of impediments or next wave of challenges well he knew that social distancing or any of uh, the uh, mass using masks they're not new absolutely they are not new they were already there and yet we in some way we did not regard them as how they should be till the time that we came to know oh this pandemic you require one or two i'm now calling for the projects uh, project managers to create this database and i'm saying that try to look let us all be very cognizant of in future what are those activities what are those diseases that are going to require these lessons learned so one one way in which i see the project management or the project managers is collecting the database collecting these lessons learned which are definitely going to be so so useful in any of the complications of covid 19 or uh, any of uh, new diseases that are likely to come so i see the project managers in healthcare project managers across communities are playing very very 
key roles today to get their projects done in this situation where so much of uncertainty lies. This has a tremendous effort on the cost of the project because you may have to, there is a lot of addition or there is a lot of uh, changes in the scope of the project or the risk related to the project or most importantly communication modalities today the project managers can use a lot of social media they can they have multiple communications channels through which uh, the uh, education or the patient education or the clinical education happens a uh, crowdsourcing happens and i think project managers are absolutely vital to get this work done and look at a new era in uh, the projects when, when all the projects are being done very virtually. Excellent. I really want to thank you, Deepa, for your contribution. Thanks and greetings uh, to our listeners. Talk to you in the next podcast. Uh, thank you so much, Matteo. It, it's my pleasure. Bene, siamo alla fine. Un grazie ai nostri ospiti di oggi e a risentirci al prossimo episodio. Normalmente un'edizione al mese, ascoltabile tramite Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, dal sito www.pmi.org slash chapters slash northern Italy, nella sezione Professional Development, ma anche dal canale YouTube PMI Northern Italy Chapter. Arrivederci, candida a mente! Thank <laughs> you.